or inside down there waiting to testify. There were people occupying everything, and that's that's so good. I, I got to say, when I first thing I thought about when I heard that people were occupying Wall Street was, it's about time because Wall Street's been occupying everything else for the last. They occupy our government. They occupy our minds an awful lot of the time with their commercial they they occupy our atmosphere because every time we try to do anything about climate change it's those big companies getting in the way so it is a good thing it is a very good thing that we're thinking about it in a different way and it's an awfully good thing you're here today i, I gotta say it is so beautiful out i am uh, I feel like a complete idiot. I told everybody to come get arrested in August here. I have no idea <laughs> what I was thinking. Clearly from now on we're going to come get arrested in October uh, from here on in. <laughs> um, and I know there's a lot of people out here who uh, spent time in jail uh, in August. Um, um, that was an amazing couple of weeks. and and. What that did, what that did, what those people did with their bodies was kind of ante up so that we could get in this fight, in this game, and now we're playing it as hard as we possibly can. And we've got another few weeks to go before the president makes a decision one way or another. And You know, we had no chance at all two months ago, and now we got some chance, and we are fighting and clawing like mad. We're going to win! And I want to introduce somebody who knows a fair amount about fighting and coming from behind and all sorts of other things. Mike Richter is an old friend of mine. And those of you who are fans of, well, of uh, what used to be Canada's greatest sport before they took up oil exporting, um, those of you who are fans of hockey know who Mike Richter is the goalie on three Olympic teams for our country, and then for the New York Rangers when they won the Stanley Cup. And uh, Now his Healthy Planet partners retrofit sports facilities to save energy, and he's been a big part of this environmental fight in all kinds of ways. It was really good to have him testifying down there this morning and now to get to hear from him. Mike. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me here. I'll, I'll make it brief, even though it's a beautiful day. Um, as Bill said, yeah, I played, I had a 15 year career as a professional athlete, and I represented this con country three times in the Olympics, and uh, very proud moments, but not exactly proud right now. We're going the wrong way when it comes to the environment and so many other social justice issues. And I think, uh, you know, the idea of having an athlete say anything is sometimes is a questionable, but there is a connection here uh, between, between our health. And really our society, right? All athletes understand that if you're going to reach your potential, you have to have a level of health. And I think the same thing goes for democracy and the social justice. And you go right down the line, our economy, our, our national security. And so as, as a father of three young boys, as a, a son of an elderly woman, our environment is so crucially bound with what our ability to reach our potential is. And I think that's one of the things that I really... Um, care about right now because we are missing our potential as a country because we are kind of selling it down the road for th this idea of cheap oil, dirty, dirty fuel early on here. I want to stress two points. I'm not going to go into the, all the environmental effects. I think this audience knows those things. But I do want to say that the environment is never just about the environment. And I mentioned that. It's national security, it's jobs, it's the economy. Um, when you think about it, the real proponents of this give two basic reasons, the economy and national security. I love Canada. I've got great friends there. I grew up playing against Canada. I'm from Philadelphia. I even have a Canadian accent, some people say. But as much as Canada is not Saudi Arabia, Canada is not the United States. And the longer that we cede our energy future to another sovereign country, the more we diminish our own ability to be secure energy-wise. <laughs> You know the climate issues just uh, are, are ridiculous. I mean, it's just, it, it's outrageous to think that we could be pouring that much, whatever the number is, three times, 82% as the EPA says, whatever it is. It's just too much. And at this point in our life and our ability to understand the ecosystems, it's, it's, it's unconscionable. One thing that really, I think, bothers me is the idea of trading the geostrategic 
uh, threat from taking our oil from the Middle East to environmental risk here in our own country. Um, you know, if we learned anything and, 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 uh, fr from that deep water horizon spill, is that the threat of an environmental catastrophe is every bit as real and devastating for the fabric of our society as any terrorist threat. And to put ourselves in that position is very responsible. Absolutely. And again, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir and I rather like it, but uh, you know, this Keystone pipeline is really going to just deepen our need to stay on oil. I mean, it's just, there's, there's no other way of looking at it. We can be investing in alternative energy. As, as Bill said, I'm starting a company that does retrofit commercial buildings. And the idea of swimming against the stream doesn't quite bother me. But when the, when the entire game is rigged as it's been, it does bother me. And we're just, we're really in, in enslaving ourselves to a future of, of uh, you know, misery uh, and, and dirty fuels by doing this. And ultimately, I think it really comes down to this. The idea that our national security depends on putting ourselves at environmental risk and sacrificing our long-term interests for the profits of a foreign private company is just simply a false choice. You know, with energy efficiency, by 2020, 10 million barrels of oil can be saved. By 2030, more than we import from the Middle East, Venezuela, and tar sands combined. Where are we on this? Why do we fast track this thing and not look at all the options in front of us? So finally, we have to get on our own grown energy policy and really the only way that we can reach our potential is by ensuring our health, having our elected leaders live up to their potential and making sure they say no to this tar sands project. Thanks so much guys, you're unbelievable.